Aloha ho mai a kakoa pauloa e nā kanaka nā o iwi. A mena ka maaina, a mena malihini ke kahi. Mahalo anui no ke kipaho ana mai. You are just stepping back in with us. I'm here with Haila Mofarden, one of our loea in our community, who is sharing so freely with us today. We just stepped out for a brief moment, and we're back here to finish up our conversation about Prince Jonah Kuhio Kalaniana Ole. Hi, Lama. Um, you wanted to finish up telling me more about Prince Kalaniana Ole. Where did we leave off? Well, we were talking about the impact and the fact that Ku Prince Kuhio, um, w at the time when he passed away, was just months after the passage and the signing of, <clears throat> of the law. Um, he comes home for Christmas break and he dies. And I, I don't think that was expected. His body said time. And uh, sadly, the world mourned. Um, a year later, they had a special memorial service in Washington, D.C., in the house. And the papers are published. The sentiments from even those racist guys honoring Prince Cuyo. Wow. To see the influence that someone can take something and transform to something. My gosh, that's magical. So a year later, they, these men who are there who made these racist comments before in writing as the bill was being passed, honored honored him for his charisma, honored him for his the way he, I think, blessed their halls. And so I think that is important because I keep going back and people say it, and it's not to be cliche, but it's got to be something in the magic of aloha. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, 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 and honoring it and living it and being it. And so I'm thinking that is the match. That is the key. That's a recipe. So when I tell mm -hmm. people, if you don't belong to a Hawaiian Civic Club, get involved. If you don't, you know, if you're in this, get involved. Do this. Tell the stories. Start with aloha. Know what it is. Learn it. If you don't know what it is yet or you thought, think, you know, go make sure you find out and find out what that is and, and live it. Mahalo, Hailama. Um, and on that note, could you please say for everyone out there who might be watching, because I do get asked the question, especially by folks, uh, some of them that come out of incarceration, mm -hmm. some of them that I meet just out, you know, out and about in the public, they come in, they tell me, oh, thank you so much for, you know, doing work in our community. And then they ask how they can get involved. Mm -hmm. How can a Hawaiian, how can our kanaka, get involved with something meaningful in our community? How do they tap into a civic club or okay. sure. other? Sure. So I just want to backtrack one step. Um, we're taught this humbleness to not intrude, not step on, on people's mm. feet. I don't necessarily know if that's traditionally Hawaiian. Because when I look okay. at what our kupuna did, our kupuna did. <laughs> they wrote, they spoke, they composed... They didn't ask permission. So I'm, I keep thinking, I wonder if it's Western. Part they, going back to the... I think it's part Asian. Yeah, something. But it's like, you got to ask permission. I'm thinking, this is remnants of another culture that has yes, come here. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. You have just vindicated my mind and my sentiments because just a couple of days ago, I was having a conversation about something else that I'm working on. Mm. And I unapologetically said... I take offense to, you know, others imposing their, um, you know, their their thoughts about this because I'm being consistent with what our kupuna did. Mm. If our kupuna felt a certain way mm -hmm. about something, if they chose to engage in ho'opa'apa'a or mm -hmm. debate or argue mm -hmm. or to challenge, that was one route. Another route is to simply tell their version Mm -hmm. of whatever it yep. is they're telling mm -hmm. and leave it be. Right. You know, you don't have to say right, right, that right. what somebody else is doing is right or wrong. Right, 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 right. And there doesn't have to be such a definitive mm -hmm. right or wrong. Right. But what you just said is key. So. Um, but and the responsibility of what if you don't say it? Yes. You have the responsibility to say it. Um, it um, I, I saw this. is It's a biblical verse too. But I've seen it in writings in a letter where a person was told, this is a kupuna, manaleo, 
back, the letter is dated 1960s, and the person is writing to his boss and says to her, I know you told me no talk to so-and-so when I get to Kauai. But as said, as I was taught, in our people know, ina ike oe he pono ia, a ole oe hana heva oe. Aye. If you see Aye. something is right to do and you don't do it, you don't want to win heva. Aye. So that means you have an obligation. If you hold a gift and you hold a response, you have an obligation Aye. to share it and say, Aye. not sit back and say, well, I'm not going to cast my pearl to swine. Sometimes a swine needs the pearls <laughs> because they're going to choke on it. Oh, that's so bad of me to say. Uh, but anyway, swine. you know, <laughs> pigs. Swine. But at any rate, um, I wanted to just talk about that because aloha is so key. Now I look at it this perspective like this. Okay, this is this is where I'm gonna go off in my pupule bin. So just so I think I've shared with some people, so I don't mind sharing with you. I'm soon to finish my classwork for my doctorate. Then oh, I start the dissertation. Yay. Can you tell us and what it's about? Yeah, I am planning to to write about Prince Kuhio and leadership. And and then I look at this larger spot. I don't know how much room I'm gonna have because I'm my, my, I'm bubbling thinking about this. Kamehameha dies on May 8th, 1819. Kamehameha the Great. He says, one of his last statements he makes is, basically to go forward and carry this burden of pono. And sometimes we, it's good to not just translate pono, but if I have to, I'll say balance. Mm. Because if I say right, then people think pono is right. I know plenty of people who are right Aye. and they're not pono. <laughs> you know? So I'm going to say balance. And, and, so he says, take on this balance. This is a charge for us. It's not only for Kamehameha II, but the people in that room, in that hale mm -hmm. where he died, for us today in 2023. All right, who, who picks it up and who sees it? I don't know enough about Kamehameha Elu. Kamehameha Ekolo picks it up. He picks it up so much that when his sovereignty is returned to him on Laho Ehoea, he says, Ua maukea o kaina i ka pono. E oni vale no oko i kuu pono a ole pau. And then he carries that word, ua mau ka aina i ka pono. He's bringing it up again. Then you start to see the behaviors of our ali'i. I can go to Kamehameha the fourth. I can go to, which, which starts to do, they create a trust, right? A hospital. The other Ali start to follow. I can jump to Kalakaua thinking to build a nation of the Pacific. I mean, as yes, close as profound. the ship was there in Samoa yes. ready to sign the... He had Tonga on... He was ready to sign the treaty with Samoa when the invasion happened and Germans uh, took over. Then, then comes our, our Lili Uokalani, our queen who implores aloha in all of her demeanor all of her mm -hmm. behavior. She could have said, the hell with all you people. She knew she had immediate power. She could have snatched all of them immediately, but she understood that she would have to pay for that later. So mm -hmm. she kept herself porno, thinking and believing and trusting that what happened 50 years prior with Kamehameha III would happen with her. She really believed it. Mm -hmm. And her faith in God should never be, um, should never be questioned because it is. It wasn't God's doing. It was these these people, these greedy people. It's really who they were. They should be called out. We should also remember them. We should talk about Thurston. We should talk about all of these people, so people know these are enemies of our kingdom. They were. Mm -hmm. There's enough documents and writing about it. It's it's sad. Well, I don't want to keep on that. But what I want to say is, what did our beautiful queen do? She continued to implore Aloha to her death. And then you have Kuhio comes up right after that. Kuhio does this. His behavior, his actions. Okay, but he dies. What next? What year did he die? 1922, January 7th. Wow. 101 years ago this year. But what's sad is the people who control the newspapers, and I'm not talking about our Hawaiian newspapers either, I'm talking about the English newspapers, the people who control the stories that go out, start to control the ability to talk about the greats like Akaiku Akanan, like Noah Aluli, those who continued the fight for Prince Kuhio. Or you talk about the um, Aima Navahi who remained alive for a little while. You, you, they forget. Or even his own wife, Princess Kahanu. And then Princess 
who continue to her death in the 40s. All right, well, then what happens? We have people like this, this man, Daniel Kahikina Akaka, who is in 1920, in, in the uh, 19, sorry, 1930s, 1943, he becomes a member of the first ever Opio Hawaiian Civic Club. And he picks up this way back then. And when I read Senator Akaka's, um, Senator Akaka's life, um, I never see him divorcing himself from Aloha. Absolutely. I've never seen it. Absolutely. Look at these nice ladies. They come and bow, bow, crawl on the ground to us to bring us vai. Mahalo ika vai. And the first that needs to stay in Leo to Tala yeah, they, 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 you they should see them crawling. And prostrate and bring to the kupu that you see my kailoa here the, at I was the Kavana Council for Native and Hawaiian Annie. Advancement. <laughs> I probably mahalo anui. No, can I jump back? Uh, I'm talking civil engagement. I'm talking akako. And why I'm doing this to us, in my opinion, and I should have had this conversation with Senator Akaka. I should have. I really believe there was influence. I really believe um, that he was inspired. Um, and there's more. There's more evidence to pull that's written. But I wanted to talk about also just a few things because the 25 minutes can come fast. Oh, no, no worry. But, I, you know, before you continue on, yeah. I just wanted to insert at this moment that I'm so, so thankful that you are saying this about Aloha um, for several different things that I find myself involved in. Mm. And even, you know, being active in our community, advocacy um, on, on the political level, um, some of our, well, many of our people don't look too much past the surface. And for even those who were political drivers on whatever the topic or issue was, and then watching as sometimes I'd turn around and just try to have aloha, I, I wish that people would have been able to hear your words because... Mm -hmm. I believe in that, you know, I become no better. Mm -hmm. We, you and I, and mm -hmm. everyone else out there becomes no better than the people that we have to try to counter in yeah, terms of yeah, what they do. Exactly. If we cannot retain the dignity and the integrity of who we because are. Because we are using non-Hawaiian yes, behaviors yes. to respond. And yet the people are promoting. We got to be home. We got to be. We're not behaving as 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 Hawaiians did, even in conflict. Yes. Aloha has there is conflict. Aloha yes. means you might get angry. Yes. It's the way you respond. It's the way you respond. And I saw it in Senator Kaka's eyes. Yes. I seen people, not literally, but doodoo fly at the senator. Yes. People swear at him. Just the, just the fact mm -hmm. that he's a kupuna. Why are you doing that? And they were so angry about his promoting. The Akaka Bill. Yes. But they, you don't ever have the right to disrespect yes. another person or a kupuna like that. I had to learn that lesson. Hmm. I learned that lesson because I too used to be one of the Hawaiians that would have no problem walking into uh, an OHA hearing hmm. or walking into the legislature and literally verbally either assaulting or attacking or so strongly criticizing the people in political leadership that after that kind of bloodshed, you know, verbally mm -hmm. and intellectually or lack thereof, mm. I can't imagine why anyone would want to respect someone like myself or someone else that was spewing that same kind of animosity towards mm. the individual rather than simply rooting ourselves in aloha and speaking from the greatest level of intellect that we can command mm. and agree to disagree but not have to stoop to the level of you know but I, I will say i think there is a point where we do have a right to respond strongly yes and and i'll give you a case in point i remember when i was a young adult i was 18 years old how many years and, ago was and that? speaking oh speaking to uh one of our mana leo Mm. And she was really gruff with me. I mean, she spoke gruff. I meant like that. But she was like, well, I don't know. You 
you first go to school and you learn your Hawaiian and da, 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 da. So I responded to her in Hawaiian. And I said what Auntie Napua Stevens taught me. And that's my ho hala hala yakako. Ea o mai yamako i kamea pono i heva ole i heva ole ai. Now, Auntie Napua actually recorded this on an album. She says that. That's where I learned it from. And I knew Auntie Napua very well. She's one of my kumu or teachers when it comes to, well, inoa game, giving. Okay. But that coconut looked at me like that. And then later on, I had a conversation with, with one of our kumu, Randy oh, Fong. Yeah. And I said, you know, I think I offended a kupuna because I said this. And he said, you know, when they are taking down your existence of who you are, there are times that you might have yes. to say strong things. So I'm not, I don't think you should worry about saying strong things. I don't think, oh. I think that, because I, I don't think you, 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 it's, it's stepping over the, yes, the thing. Yes, and then yes, you yes. start to, do the non-Hawaiian thing. Yes. Not, that's not what you do. No, no, that's I agree. Well, I used to, I, I used to take it to a, uh, you know, a much more extreme mm -hmm. level, which was unnecessary. Mm -hmm. I completely agree that, you know, for people who are listening to this edition of Leo Tutala, um, our advocacy should be, always be there. It should mm -hmm. always reflect our passion, our Absolutely. fervor, mm -hmm. our commitment and dedication to our Lahui, our Aina. But, we should always be mindful right. that even when we disagree, we should still um, execute mm -hmm. with a level of clarity. Mm -hmm. yep. and, and, not, and dignity. And dignity. Yep. And not always just fall victim to runaway yep. emotions yeah, that yeah, we yeah, can't yeah, control. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, that's exactly. sort of where I'm going. So take us back yep. to Kuhio and... So so oh, I just want to wrap up the thing. So my, my dissertation is going to encapsulate the uh, probably opening chapter will talk about um, Kamehameha Ekahi and his, oh. his dying words. Oh, gosh. Grabbing, grabbing Kamehameha Ekolu and a few of the other Kamehamehas mm -hmm. ending with, of course, Lili Wokalani in that realm. Picking up again with folks like, not only, Prince Kuhio, and then jumping forward, this is throughout. Of course, the probably the greatest part of it will be on Prince Kuhio. So it's going to be like this and then Kuhio. But then you got to look at the future. What is left? What's the plan? And and I and I admire Senator Kaka. Like I said, all of that stuff that people threw at him. I never forget signs I used to see where they would spell his name, Akaka. A in black and red would be Kaka. Yeah. And we know what that means. That means doodoo. But not just doodoo. It's like the worst word you could use the for doodoo. The worst slang that you could throw. Yeah, to throw. Terrible. How can you honor somebody, dishonor somebody's name like that? <clears throat> Whether you agree with them or not. Even, even our enemies, we shouldn't do that kind of stuff. Because you dishonor their kupuna. And is that what you meant to do? Aye. So anyway, the encapsulation will be, you here. Now what? So with Kuhio and all of the work I've told you about, and even uh, Senator Kaka, where is our kuleana? Where are we going to stand? What are we going to do to keep to Awamu this aloha and this responsibility and legacy of, of uh, Ho'ilina of Prince Kuyo? And what would Kumu Hailama say to all of our people out there? What do you want our people to do? Yeah, I, so for me, it's Awamu Kuleana. First of all, you got to figure out, you know, it's like you come to somebody's house and you, you know, ask, what can I do? You go do something, which means you're looking around and you're going, well, dishes need to be washed. I go wash them. And they're going to tell you, stop washing the dishes. And you're going to, there's a protocol. It's like, you wash them, leave them. No, no, I go do it. No, leave them. No, no, I go do it. Leave them. That whole back and forth is bickering. It's all useless. It's just part of culture. <laughs> the true essence is what you do. Yeah, get over there so and do it. We just do it. <laughs> we just do it. Now, if the person doesn't want you to do Culturally, they will walk to you and remove you from the right, dishes. Right, right. And then you know, you right, don't do that. Right, right, right. But if, as long as they're not pulling you in front of dishes, wash the, wash the dishes. So if you could take that and expand that out to everything we need to be done, whether it's signing up and becoming a legislator, you know, being a Hawaiian doesn't mean you cannot jump into all of these arenas. We are where we are at this point. So let's, let's, we need our battles and our boyers in yes. every single. If you are going to be, a teacher, be Tinona Beamer said this, I quote her, be the damn best damn teacher you're going to be. If you're going to be a Hawaiian musician, dancer, kumuhula, then be the best damn musician, kumuhula, you're going to be. If you're going to be a, a lawyer, then you'd be the best damn lawyer. 
And always keeping in mind, I am doing this not for myself, but for my people. And keep that connection. I, I want to be a rubbish man. Then you be the best damn rubbish man you're going to be. And uh, uh, then just no do them. Lead it. Yes. Every point. You, you know, you like be one senator. Go be the Senate president. You know, or whatever, you know. Well, Take the reins. So, Hai Lama, with that, I'm going to get up on my little Kumuhina platform. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to advocate off of the words that you have said. Mm -hmm. And maybe restate it and say, be it and be all about it. Mm -hmm. So whether you're going to be a kumu, whether you're going to be somebody who is working the land, mm -hmm. whether you're going to be somebody who's taking care of the land and cleaning the land, mm -hmm. those things are all part and parcel of anyone's life anywhere in the world. But Hawaii has to be our pico. Hawaii has to be our mainland internally, mm -hmm. mentally and emotionally and spiritually. Mm -hmm. Oh, Hawaii, Kuuai na Makwahine, Hawaii is, is mine. It is our motherland. Mm -hmm. With that said, we as a people, our generation and others who teach the next generations that always looking outside for the answers, the solutions, the, you know, we can embrace yeah, things that yeah. come from away. Mm -hmm. But not at the expense of completely disavowing ourselves right, right. and disconnecting ourselves from things that actually have a greater ability to resonate and to even address the issues that we have. And so I advocate for all of you, um, those of you who want to get active, be more involved. There are many options for you to, to look at when considering a Hawaiian Civic Club. Mm -hmm. Um. Also checking out our site, hawaiiancouncil.org, mm -hmm. and becoming a member to be just even more aware and be more engaged. We have to. You know, when I was a child, I was taken by my, I was raised by my paternal grandparents. I was taken to functions. I was dragged to, I remember this one room that I was taken into this room, and these people kept using this word. I didn't know what it meant. It was con, 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 con. Oh. I didn't realize I was in, oh, and then this woman, Auntie Margaret Apo, talking about Hawaiian language, which I understood. I was six years, seven years old. I didn't know that they were trying to advocate for what would later be a cru critical part. I think these were, might have been the Waianae group. They were sending their manao through their delegate, I guess. Aye. Auntie Margaret Apo, I remember speaking and thinking, she's talking about Hawaiian language. Okay. I mean, I'm in my mind, I, but later on, you look back and you go, oh, wow. How much influence did they do for their advocacy that eventually yes. allows us to celebrate that Hawaiian language is yes. an official language of our state yes. and and that kind of stuff. So we have to create these yes. environments in our families to talk about these things. Spend the time. And you're like, I, I can't talk about Kuhio. I don't know Kuhio. Go find out about Kuhio. Mm -hmm. Go read the civil beat stories on Prince yes. Kuhio. Go tell your children about this great man. Bring them. If you want to bring them to the parade to watch the parade, Good, because it's a way that the children can learn. You want to bring them to participate in the parade? Absolutely. Participate, even though there's a deadline. If you write a nice letter to to Kuhio Lewis and say, please, I really, I changed my, I want to be a part of this parade. Please, I went watch Hai Lama on top of the stuff, and he said we could do this. So just drop my name, and then if, if he doesn't, if he doesn't uh, say yes, then, you know, call me. I work at Kamehameha School. <laughs> call me, and I go try. But, you know, the th he carries the name after all, yeah? So we're going to make the uh, great parade um, My for our people. Lord. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, and speaking of happiness and parade, I want to, I want I to, I know our time is getting close. I want to tell you some, I want to tell you some happiness about Prince Kuyo because he was a keiki too. He was a kanaka. He was a person. And and even to the point that he gets his nickname Prince Cupid. Oh, you know, and and because he looked like a little Cupid doll, he just was so loved by his people, his teachers, and and I knew I knew women who grew up in his house mm -hmm. at Puale Lani, and uh, these two women that I want to call and bring in, I wish they were here to tell you the story themselves. Was Auntie Hale Lani Chilton Doan, and Auntie Irma Chilton Keck Kalepuli Hale. And these two um, beautiful women, Auntie Helene was one who was civically engaged. She did not hold back her words, and yet she had a platform on which she knew. When she said things, 
She knew. It's not just my opinion. I knew. After all, she grew up in Pualeilani with the prince because her dad was friends with the prince. Her dad was his barber. So you can't get more intimate than the barber right. cutting the hair right. of our Ali. Uh. Yeah? And they knew the role. It's not the Western idea, cut your hair. We're taking mana from the Ali yes. by cutting. When, before he died, he cut his, trimmed his mustache so it oh. would look good you know, uh, for his funeral. And, and it does the intimate stories of Prince. I, and Auntie Helene tells this story. So Auntie Helene is born about 1908 or so. So you figure she gets to see Kuhio until in her teens. And Auntie Helene's sister, older sister, was Auntie Irma Kek. Auntie Irma's son was Alec Kek with, from the famed Invitations, the old Muddy Four and the Invitations. So Auntie, and Auntie, by the way, Auntie Irma and Auntie Auntie um, Helene were part of a group called the Annie Kerr Singers. And they were like the today's Naleo Pilimehana back in the 20s, 30s, 40s. They continued playing. And Auntie Helene would tell me that when we were a child, we'd go to Pualeilani. And once they went there, they, she said that the table was full with food. So excited because they're going to get to eat that food. you know. <laughs> and so as they're doing that, they noticed there's lights now, torches coming from the outside. They could see. She tells us she could see them coming. And then the torches went this way and started coming into Pualeilani. So she thought, oh, these men were coming with their canoes to bring their ali fish that they caught. So they had gone out fishing, probably night fishing, and they're bringing their ali, their catch, the first catch. Wow. Imagine that. That's the love of the people. So they come in, and, and Prince Kuhio greets them. He tells his chef, it's Auntie Helene telling me this, take all this food on this table, wrap it up, and give it to these men. So she looks in, in, in like, uh, you know, upset, like, that's my food, you know, she says. <laughs> she goes like this. She, she says, I yanked on his coat. So that tells me her size to him. She yanked on his coat. She looked up at him and she said, but Cupid told me something else. You were that intimate with him that you called him Cupid. Not Prince. Cupid. So Cupid, what are we going to eat? And he said, don't worry, dear. There's more of that food inside the kitchen for us. You know, but she never forgot that story. And she said that the entertained folks often, the poor Leilani, they would have a punch called Prince uh, Kuhio Punch, which I don't remember all the ingredients, but I remember it had a type of sherbet. It had a type of liquor, which I believe may have been okolehau or may have been gin. Oh. And, um, you know, fabulous um, stories that imagine they're int intimately known. So when I interviewed the older sister about Prince Kuhio, and I'm, I'm sad to say that the people who were handling the interview, like how you folks are doing like this, I just did the interview, uh -huh. they lost the interview. Uh -huh. And this auntie Irma was in her 90s uh -huh. when I went to see her to capture this. Uh -huh. And she told me more about Prince Kuhio. But she also told me about Lili Uokalani because she was a little girl of six, I think. Uh, six. No, she was young, old, a little older than that. But she was... I think she was born in oh she was born in oh six, but she was a young she said one thing, she said, I love my dad. She told me like that. She was, you know, my dad woke me up when the queen died. And they were moving her body at night. She said, You know, they only moved Ali at night. And she said, My dad said, You need to wake up and you need to see this. I said, What did you see, Auntie? She said, The people were wailing. As the body was coming near, you could hear it. I said, In nineteen seventeen they were they're still doing she was wailing, wailing for their Ali and crying. And she said, so many people at night. Uncle Saul Bright talks about the same thing. Yes. You know, he was born in 1909 and he remembers the Queens because they grew up right in Koula. Koula is in Kaka'ako Aye. on Cook Street. Aye. He said, I remember the Queens procession. And this, this, the memory of our Ali, I mean, of our Ali through these eyes of these kupuna who saw and, and, you know, something about Prince Kuhio, his brothers, they go to California. They bring surfing there. And that's another story. You can all look it up. It's easy to look up. The fact that they saw the waves where they were. And they're like, let's go surfing. Okay. So they grab board, redwood board. They go have, take it to a mill, have it carved so they can go surf. And that was captured in the newspaper. So there's witness to the actual day that surfing made it to Hawaii. Even though I love Duke Hanamoku, I honor him. He was not the one who took surfing to the world. He was the one who popularized it through the world, which is important too. 
Then one brother dies. They go to England to school. They do it again. They take surfing to England now when they're in school there. So all of these things. And my Auntie Emma would say that. They used to watch Prince Kuhi and she was, I guess, a little offended because he smoked a cigar. You know? And so she tells her father, my, my, my grandfather's sister, Emma Farden Sharp, she tells her, you know, um, Daddy, the prince smokes a cigar. And I heard the same story about the queen, that some of her, some of the children saw the queen and they said, Ali can do what they want to do. <laughs> yeah, she said. But, you know, those are those are human stories. To tell. Oh, yeah. They are just as much human. I believe, based on what I've read, um, if you, Kili Maka'inana was a good name for him because he didn't, he wasn't up in this higher echelon. He was there because of his rank, but he sat with you. If you were, if he were to be right over here, he would probably let me rant on about him and they go, you know, he probably like, no, let's talk about what I'm going to do now. Let's talk about what we need to do as a people. I don't, don't need to talk about me. And um, Kuhio is another thing I want to talk about his name. So the name Kuhio, uh, I used to say, well, I was joking with Prince Quentin Kuhio Kavananako because he's the namesake. I go, hey, how come, your family, how come your family takes that name? I'm joking with him now. Please know that I'm close enough with him. I can joke. I go, how come you guys got to name me Kuhio like this? You know, And he looks at me straight. Oh, that's not what the meaning is. It means to stand and lean forward. So you anticipate cool that which is called. And I'll, so I always interpret that as to stand with foresight. That's how I interpret his name. And I've embraced it. And I was like, actually, I was kind of like, wow, that's deep. Because that's what he is. Cool that's what he did. Yeah. And then Kalani Anaoli, the chief without measure. Oh, very fitting. His Inua is so appropriate. So we got to talk about it. We got to talk about his name. And, and know that you want to, what shall we do? We be Kuhio. You know, we do that work. And mm -hmm. and think about what you can do and do it. Just do it. I like what you said for people to join uh, CNHA. You know, in, in under under Kuhio Lewis's leadership, we've re we, he, you folks, we have really embraced a lot more. There's so much Kuleana that is out there. And we benefit from going to the annual conventions. I'm happy. I just had the discussion with uh, Mehana today to remind everybody that the one that is in Las Vegas is not replacing the one that's in November. So just remember, you can go to both. But the one in November is still happening here in Hawaii. Okay, so don't get heartburn over that. Yes. So for <laughs> everyone who is anticipating more updates mm. about the CNHA convention, don't forget. Mm -hmm. Come to our website, hawaiiancouncil.org. You can look for more information on the Hawaii Convention as well as the Las Vegas Convention uh, there on the continent. And if you're able to come to only one, Maikai. Mm -hmm. If you're wanting to come to both, that's totally up to you as well. Uh, but don't forget, check us out, hawaiiancouncil.org, for more updates and information. Yes, you... Um, are absolutely right, Hailama. There are two. So don't be confused. Mm -hmm. Go check it out. And, and and myself, I tell you, go, and I may not be able to be there in, in Las Vegas. I love to go there because it's fun. Mm -hmm. But um, the work is so important. We should go where it is too. Aye. And our people are there. Our people are all over. Kuhio yes. went there to that yes. continent because that's where our people were. So we have to acknowledge that. But it's never to trade that. But I'm, I'm coming back from Austria the day before, I think. So oh, I, I probably just won't fly straight <laughs> over there. <laughs> yeah, hele lele pololei no oi ilaila. Ui ho kako malaila. Hailama, mahalo anui ya oi for sharing with us your insights and your perspectives, your wisdom and infinite knowledge about not only Prince Kuhio Kalanian Ole, but also about Hawaiian understanding. And I, we would be so honored if you would be, you know, a repeat guest because mm -hmm. there's so much that we have to teach and to share to ensure that whether especially in your case, um, it may have been something you heard from the kupuna, mm. learned from them. It may have come from your research. It may have come from an infinite number of ways, but we need to share it with our people so that we promote an enlightened and uplifted community. And we, and we have access to the resources. So I, everything I've told you, except maybe the personal story, like from Auntie Irma and Auntie Helani, 
everything I've told you, you can find. You know, you have Papakilo and Ulukau. Mm-hmm. You can look up these stories. You get newspapers.com. Mm-hmm. You go read the newspapers about Kuhio throughout the world, not just here, and see the perspective of the people in the different cities that he stops over or whatever. You yeah. learn these things, and it's all open to everybody. That's the difference about today from when we were children. Aye. You got access to everything, Aye. and you're the, the, and we have no reason why we shouldn't be learning. Mm-hmm. Well... Uh, no, Leila. Eh, oh, one last thing. Mm. Um, our Kuhio Day Parade that's happening out here in Kapolei this year. Don't forget to also stop by hawaiiancouncil.org for more information about the Prince Kuhio Day Parade mm-hmm. happening on March 25th, which is a Saturday. Now, mm-hmm. I'm probably going to... You know, be uh, I'll be there, but I'm going to be in and out because I'm, haha, I will be in a performance mm. uh, that evening. And so, you know, check out my social media mm. uh, for more information. Uh, you can check out the Kumuhina page for that. But we hope to see you out there at the Kuhio Day Parade, especially all of you Hawaiians out there who are uh current beneficiaries, and even if you're not, come out because this is truly a holiday that we should honor, yeah. uplift, and... On top of that, you know, the, the Kuhio Parade is not something new. Yes, in the last 10, 15 years, we had several. But they used to have these Prince Kuhio Parades throughout, and it was started in the communities of our DHHL communities. So it started in these... So I, I, I know you can read about the parades in Nanakuli, you know, in the all of the Ainaho Pula Pula areas, Aye. and they were on all, all islands. So we're picking up a tradition. And the reason that it was moved from Waikiki, the home of Prince Kuhio, to this community here this year is because our people are here. So that means be here. Be here, so prove us correct that it was the right decision to take it out of what people criticized as being a tourist parade because it went through Waikiki. But really, it's it's not that. I mean, it's the tradition is a connection of our elite in Waikiki. But prove us correct that it was the right decision to bring it here. Ah, no leila he mana oho pe pa ka o ka hoku ana no mahalo nui ya oi mahalo i ke ia pa ma li mahana ma ane i ke ia vahi nei si nei che i ke i ke koku o ana i ka hapai ana ke ia mau mana o vai vai na mana o um o ko kaku mau kuleana amaku e awa mo nei um vahi a kahi po e kuhio kui kia ko na kupuna kuhio kui ka hano o na kupuna kuhio i kia loha O nā kūpuna nō laila, e kui heo kākou i ki aloha nā kūpuna i ka hoa i lino nā kūpuna. Haia nō. Uh, mahalo anu ia oe e hai lama nō ke ka ana ana mai ko ike, ka awe ana mai ko manawa, uh, nō ke e launa ana nō e o kāua. Mea iki, mea iki. Ai. Uh, mahalo anu ia o ko a paoloa e ko Hawaii nei pai aina apuni a pā nō i nā aina mamao i nā kukulu e hā o kahiki. Ki aloha nui no ia o ko, mahalo anui no keia hui ana, a hui hou, aloha. Aloha.